live on Periscope 2. This is our very first Star Talk Cosmic Query is live on Facebook. And I got with me Chuck Nice. Chuck. All right. Hey, Neil. Right, we got a couple of minutes together here. Yes, we do. Yes, Let's we do. do this. And yeah. it's live. It's great. Yes. And uh, we are going to get uh, questions once people get online, once they know that we're here and mm -hmm. they pop online. Cosmic Queries, this is a normal thing we do on Star Talk Radio. Absolutely. Yeah. And questions uh, from people. So people are typing in right now? People are typing them right now, and they'll just they'll make their little replies and uh, uh, their comments. And as they come through, I will give them to you. Okay. And you can. Uh, in the meantime, I just talk smack. Right. In the meantime, <laughs> and normally, you know, normally what happens is we 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 filter these questions. Yeah. So, or I filter them. Uh, the cool thing about this is I have no idea what anybody's going to ask, and uh, whatever comes through. So, whatever you want to know, bring it on. Just br bring it on. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Make my day. So, and, and before we do that, I should also let you know that um, for those of you who are interested, uh, you know, everything that we do, no matter what it is, we have now a site called StarTalkAllAccess.com, which is a subscription site where you can subscribe. Everything we do, you'll receive commercial free. In addition to that, you'll receive videos of all the podcasts that we do. In addition to that, there are interviews that you do, Neil, with very famous people that never make it to anywhere. Yeah, they're on the cutting room floor. They're on the otherwise. cutting room floor, right. and we'll have those there. And in addition to that, if that is not enough, you we also have exclusive original content that can only be found on All Access. And when you subscribe, if that is not enough, you can watch us on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And you get uh, a Ginsu knife. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, if you act now. All right, so what do you have? Are they coming in yet? Um, let's see here. I have not received. This is potpourri, so this is on any top topic in the universe. That's and, right. And if I don't know the answer, if, if, if I don't know the answer, I'll just say I, I don't know. Go on to the next question. Okay. So here's the I deal. I claim to know everything. I have stuff about the universe. The cool thing is I have 300, 400 and some odd people on here right now. Okay. And I just pulled up the comments. Let's go. Let's Sir, yes. uh, I'm not even going to pronounce your name. Uh, you did that on like purpose. Yashavantha Tamamamakuru says, okay. uh, any advances in the field of interstellar travel as we have discovered seven new exoplanets? Yeah. So he want you, what, you want to leave Earth? He, want, he wants to get <laughs> out of here. He's like, I I gotta get out of here now. <laughs> I heard Goldilocks zone, and I, I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, so the problem is the fastest spaceship we've ever launched, the, the, the fastest thing, if you aimed it for the closest exoplanet, mm -hmm. get the other seven. Right. Let's go to Proxima Centauri. It's called Proxima because it's close. Right. It's the closest. That's <laughs> why this, we gave, get, gave it that name. Uh -huh. It's four light years away. Oh. Because the other one is, what is it, 40, 50 light years? I forgot right. the number, but it's tens of light years. Proxima Centauri, right there. Right. Aim your fastest thing we have ever launched. Take you 70,000 years. Oh, let's go tomorrow. <laughs> so you got to figure out how to defy your biology right. or invent a wormhole. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on the wormhole. Okay. Not cryostasis? No. Uh, and then make a movie and yeah. wake up. And right. We wake up 70,000 years later, right? <laughs> and, you know, of course, here's the thing. You only have a 5 o'clock shadow <laughs> for some reason in the movies. You go to sleep for 70,000 years, wake up, oh, I might need to That's shake. not the only issue in the movie. They never... Pee or poop in movies. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. There's, there are other issues. Uh, there are other <laughs> reality. Issues. Right. right. All right. Okay. What else you got? All right. Here we go. Let's uh, let's move down and see what we got interesting here. Hello, Doctor Tyson. This is a uh, Dichrit Inswig. Kaya. Uh, hello, Dr. Tyson. I'm, I'm so sorry for butchering your name. I know I did. Uh, hello, Dr. Tyson. We're going to bring in a name reader, yes, and then you see. pick up the question after. Okay. Lord and Lady Font. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tyson, can you talk about the articles you've written that have appeared in any peer review uh, journals uh, along those lines? Yeah, sure. You, you have, yeah. Yeah, I have a, a not as many as many of my colleagues who right. do that exclusively. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had a prediction some years ago uh, published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, right. uh, which are shorter, faster communication that might have impact to affect the work of others, uh -huh. where I made a prediction that there might be 10 times as many galaxies out there yeah. than what our 
then catalogs would show. Right. And at the time, some better telescopes were brought to bear on it, and they found like three or four times as many galaxies. Yes. Not the full up 10. Not the full 10. It still felt good. It, pr- it prompted some searches and, right. and, and a way to find them. There, and recent evidence actually comes much closer to my original prediction. So, so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. That's one example of stuff that I'd done. But it's, it's, it's not secret publications. There's something called Google Scholar. Okay. It's not your normal Google search engine, but just type in Google Scholar, go there, and type in my name, and you'll see all my You'll see all stuff. There. Oh, that's very cool. There you have it. All right. I also study the structure of the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, really? Uh, and the core and the center and things nice. like that. So it's in there if you're interested. Uh, the core of the center of the Milky Way, if I'm not mistaken. It's a black hole lurking there, yes. Oh, no, I thought it was caramel and creamy nougat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't help it, man. I'm sorry. Here you go. Uh, Let's go lightning round because we don't have much time. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, Dr. Tyson, I want to do exactly what you do. What did you study uh, to be where you are right now? I studied physics and math, both of which constitute the language of the universe. Okay. In the same way, you want, if you go to China, you learn Mandarin, you speak to people there. Mm-hmm. You learn Spanish to go to Spain, you speak to people there. Right. You want to speak to the universe. And understand what it's telling you. Right. You got to speak its language. And that's math. It's ma- math and physics, basically the yeah. foundations of 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 the sciences. And so, um, so that's what I did. So I majored in physics. Sweet. In college, and then got a PhD in astrophysics. And then you are conversant. Then, but I do these other things. I write books and this sort of thing. So I think a lot about how people learn. Mm-hmm. and how they pay attention. And so I fold in what I know with what it is to share that love. Then I'm just doing what Carl Sagan said you do when you're in love. You want to tell the world. Oh, how romantic. Okay. Next, go. All right. Hey, Chauncey, Heath Chauncey. Uh, first of all, what's up? And secondly, uh, he says, Dr. Tyson, moon or Mars? Oh, uh, I mean, that's I, I love that because the whole question is implicit in those two. There you go. Uh, where you want to go there, first? There you go. Moon to Mars. You go, go to back Mars. to the moon, go to Mars, but it's harder. And do you have the money? Can right. you do it yet? Can we do the moon first? And you can do that in a new cycle because it only takes three days to go to the moon. You hang out, come back. You're back in a week. Mars is years. So I'm saying... I'm I'm a contrarian here, not a contrarian. I have a, I'm driving in a different lane. Okay. My lane is we should turn the whole solar system into our backyard. Wow. With a lineup of booster rockets, mm-hmm. take two from here, three from there, that gets you to Mars. Right. One from there, two from there, that gets you to an asteroid. Right. What we should not be thinking of destinations. We th- should be thinking of capabilities. Wow. And if you think of capabilities as a goal, right. then the entire solar system becomes your backyard, and nothing sits out of reach. Hot damn, that was good. I got it. <laughs> mic uh, <laughs> <Mike> drop. <laughs> Pen drop. <No>. Pen drop. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's move on. Go. Sorry, here we go. I wanted to get this one purposely. Raul Narwani. Okay? Raul says this. Putting CO2 back into the earth in pressurized condition after absorption. Is this feasible? What he's talking about is carbon capture, is yeah, yeah, car- what yeah, they car- call it. It's carbon capture. Exactly. Is it is it feasible? Yeah, so I, it turns out, from what I have read, if you want to remove carbon from the air that we have put in, the energy requirement to do that, you're going to ask, well, where are you going to get the energy to well, that? Do makes that makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. And if you're doing it, you know, you know, you're going to burn oil to capture the carbon. Right. So if you're doing it with solar power mm-hmm. or something that does not have a carbon footprint, then you could have used that for your energy in the first place. Gotcha. Right. Why? You right. So, so these are some of the challenges the you know that will confront us as we move forward. All Wouldn't right. it be great if we can have some way to just dump the stuff back into the back into the ground? Look, limestone is sequestered carbon, basically. Right. right. And so, but that involved life forming it. So, if you could do that, yeah, burn away. You know, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> if you can bury it, if but you can we, bury we, it. we're not there yet. Right, we're not, we're no, okay, right. We don't have that much power over geoengineering to turn that into a thing. So really, the, 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 the better solution is switching than trying to deal with continuing to burn and bury. Right, it's like, uh, oh, what's the solution to acid rain? Let's all carry... 
Let's all carry an acid proof umbrella. Is right. <laughs> right. Let's all coat everything in an acid proof um, <laughs> layer of some type of. Yeah. It just depends on how you're thinking about solving a problem. Right. That's all. Okay. Gotcha. All okay. right. Uh, this Next. is uh, uh, Rizzo Banderita. Hey, uh, Rizzo Banderita says, "Good evening, Dr. Tyson. Is there any- evening? So yeah, we're in a different says, time zone. He's, he's in a different time different zone. Time zone. Yes, so where is. is it? Evening. So right uh, now it's three. So that would be Europe or he's in, yeah. yeah, further over. Okay. Okay. There you go. So Rizzo. Uh, right here it's only. Three o'clock in the afternoon. There you go. So Rizzo says this. Good evening, Dr. Tyson. Is there any plan for a Cosmos season two? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, we're trying to get the band back together for that, right? And it was a huge collaboration. Art, you know, artists and designers and right, you know, and so so nothing's greenlit, but we're we're trying to lean that way. So there's nothing to announce yet. Okay, cool. So, but thank you for that question. It's a great question. That meant they they liked the they first lo- one. They love the first one. Yeah. That means they want more. Yeah. Uh, hey, Cole. Um, Premo, Cole, uh, yes, I did make a dad joke. I apologize. Um, here we go. Um, oh, I, oh. Okay, so Ali Yaya, Yaya wants to know this. Can humans develop to be higher and smarter creatures? Can we develop that? So I don't see why not in principle. Okay. It's just that the brain remains such a mystery to us. We don't really have a good explanation for consciousness, much less what's going on in your brain for it to become intelligent. Right. We know what can make you really not intelligent, okay? (laughs) So (laughs) true. Because almost any chemical influence on the brain makes you sort of less capable than other, than no influence on the brain, okay? When you think like alcohol and drugs and things that people do. Under those influences, that's not when you want to write down the rocket formula, right? So, So in this, um, I would say there could be a day where we find out that these neurosynapses are your analytic center, and this is where your math center is, and this is where your artistic center is, and I want to be a better artist. Well, stimulate that or, right. or rebuild this. Right. I, I don't see anything in principle from standing in the way of that ultimately being discovered one day, unless intelligence is so complex, so is so distributed in all the neurosynapses that it's hard to just point to it. We can't, say, lo- can't locate, locate can't localize it. it. Localize it. It, right. it. it could be something much more uh, intricate than how I'm making it sound at this moment. But sure, you'd want, it, you'd want that to happen. Yeah, and then there's so also that we can become better shepherds of our own fate. I was going to say, there's also the integration of technology into the human brain that may be the next evolution of who we become. Or why do you have to put it in the brain? Just leave it out here. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, no, no I, I, you ain't oh, cutting right. open my brain. That's right. You're right. right. Stop messing with my brain. Stay on the phone, damn yeah, it. Right. People Stay say on the phone. People say one day we'll plug the USB into your neck. And right. I'm saying. This is kind of already that. Right, right. It's, but it's not plugged into my neck. Right. You can get knowledge from the world. Right. All right, right here. So, right here in the palm right of your here. hand. You I got my you. neck alone. All right, Jason M. Cook says this. Hey, Dr. Tyson, have you ever worked with or been to the um, uh, hard, hard, Hadron Collider? I have never been to the... You got to watch how you pronounce that. I was about to say hard on... goes in the wrong place. I was about to say hard on collider. Right, that's what I'm saying. Just hard on in the collider. correct place there. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I deeply regret that I've yet to visit the the European Center for Nuclear Research, right. which is acronymed out at CERN. CERN, and their biggest accelerator there is the Large Hadron Hadron, Hadron. Collider. Right. And hadrons are particles made of quarks, and g- the general description of part- particles made of quarks. And so, uh, and basically, they, they can slam protons together, make very high energy environments, and they're looking for dark matter. And it's basically the largest machine. Ever built, okay? It's the oh. largest machine ever. ever built, period. Ever. Wow. Next is like the International Space Station. Wow. You can say that's built like in space. International Space Station is the size of a football arena. Right. But the Large Hadron Collider is like miles in circumference. Look at and that. If you go there, just stand there. Look at photos of people standing in the cross section of the collider, and you see the wires and the the metal, and it's superconducting, and it's got it's physics, and it, and so you say, whoa. We can do this. We can probe the the Big Bang itself, giving us a little taste of the origin of the universe in our backyard. Wow. Give it up for the physicists. One last question from uh, Yasha uh, Vanta, Yasha Vanta, uh, who says, hey, Dr. Tyson, I'm from India. Please, will you run for president? (laughs) 
<laughs> India? <laughs> I don't know. Or, <laughs> wait, wait. I, it, what? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure he means here, <laughs> but that'd be pretty funny. It's just like, will you run for president of India? Is that a he or a she? Yeah, uh, I don't know. What's the first name? Yashavanta. 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 The Thaws, I think, are female. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but so uh, no, I actually on my website, I have. Uh, <laughs> I was asked by the I was asked by the New York Times uh -huh. back when Congress was at an impasse, and they said, "Let's ask people who are not politicians if they have solutions to this." Clearly, the, the politicians don't. Okay. So they asked like a musician, and this, and I asked, "I'm like the scientist." They asked, right. and I and so the question is, what would you do if you were president? And my answer was, and is, and still is, posted on my website, not my Facebook page. I actually have a website. That's how old fashioned I am. Uh -huh. He said, "What if I were president?" This is what things would be. And in there, it says, if I were president, I would not be president. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I don't have interest in leading people. Right. My interest as an educator, and especially as a scientist, is educating people right. so that they can make as an informed decision as they can when they elect who they want to represent them. Nice. If you just went around swapping leaders back and forth, you haven't solved the electorate problem. Wow. Okay? So the real problem with America is we are too dumb to pick good leaders. No, well, no, it's, no, mm. no, that, no, no. Let me say it differently, okay? okay? The problem is- Go ahead. If we have dis if we have dysfunctional politicians, right. it's because we have a dysfunctional electorate. Right. Because the electorate puts them in office. Mm -hmm. And if you say, I hate this guy, blah, blah, then vote him out. Right. Okay? You right. vote for these people in a democracy. In India, the world's largest democracy, all yes. right? Yes. You, we can control this stuff. It's not some king brought down from the ages where you can't get rid of him. And in the old days, the only way they got rid of him was how? Off with your head. Off with your head, okay? Uh, so, so, so I'm just saying I would rather, I would rather disseminate knowledge, wisdom, and insight to all who I can so that when they make their political decision, whoever they vote for, it's as informed a decision as they possibly can make. Wow, that is good, good stuff. Uh, we are out of time, and and I know, hey, Joel and uh, Gabriel and Ali and uh, Nimral and must have known that we couldn't have gotten all the questions. Leonard there. and Carol and Josh and you guys have some great questions, but they're very involved, and you know I'm this, sure that, this was live. This and was live. So, sorry to bust into your day this way, right? Um, but, but you know what, we're gonna get all this stuff on a regular Star Talk because this we're gonna keep. These we're going to keep this and those questions. We're going to keep this. We're going to keep those questions. We'll do a whole Star Talk. We'll do a Star Talk just Cosmic off the queries. questions that you guys have here. That's great for new Good. Cosmic Queries. And, uh, of course, everything that we do can be found uh, commercial-free along with um, exclusive original content on StarTalkAllAccess.com. Stuff that you'll see Neil do that he won't do anywhere else, like get naked. That is not, no, don't, that, that is you not. Want to see Neil not, naked? Not, 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 Come on, not, don't you want to see Neil naked? Not, 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 not. StarTalkAllAccess.com. You can see <laughs> Neil naked. No, that's, that's StarTalk after hours. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, we out. All right, we out. Okay. <laughs>